Hey guys, Mr. Zigner, it's lesson 5-1. We're estimating with fractions today. You can see here we're going to be estimating with mixed numbers, with fractions. We're going to be using compatible numbers and taking a look at a real-world example. So here's our first one. We're going to be estimating 2 and 7 ninths plus 5 and 1 fourth. All right, the deal with mixed numbers is we're going to either round them up or down to the next whole number. So in the case of 2 and 7 ninths, we're either going to round that to 2 or to 3. So what is 2 and 7 ninths closer to? Is it closer to 2 or 3? Well, here, 7 ninths, 7 is definitely more than half of 9. So 7 ninths is more than 1 half. One half is our point where we round up. So since this is more than one half, this two and seven ninths is definitely closer to three than it is two. So we're gonna round two and seven ninths to three. Now five and one fourth, what is it closer to? Is it closer to five or is it closer to six? Well, one fourth is less than half so we're just going to round this to 5. 5 and 1 fourth is closer to 5 than it is 6. And to finish up, 3 plus 5 is, of course, 8. So again, with mixed numbers, we're rounding them to the nearest whole number. All right, keep moving. Now we have 4 and 2 thirds times 3 and 1 eighth. Well, again, we ask ourselves, is 4 and 2 thirds closer to 4 or 5? Well, two-thirds is more than one-half, so four and two-thirds is really closer to five. Now three and one-eighth. Is three and one-eighth closer to three or four? Well, three and one-eighth is closer to three. One-eighth really is much less than one-half. Four-eighths would have been exactly one-half, and at that point, we would have rounded up. So we finish off with multiplying five by three, and five times three is, of course, 15. All right, now something new, 8 ninths plus 1 sixth. When you're dealing with just fractions and not mixed numbers, I want you to round to one of three places, either 0, if the fraction really isn't worth much at all, 1 half, if it's close to 1 half, or even 1 whole, if it's almost the whole thing, like 7 eighths or 9 tenths, you can round that right up to 1. Okay, let's get started. So 8 ninths, well, 8 is almost all of 9, so we're going to round 8 ninths all the way to 1. Plus, now 1 sixth. 1 sixth is just the opposite. 1 is not very much of 6. It's the smallest fraction of 6 you can do. So 1 sixth, I'm just going to round that all the way to 0. We finish by adding 1 plus 0, and of course that's 1. So 8 ninths plus 1 sixth is going to be pretty darn close to 1. Next one. Now we have 11 twelfths. Well, 11 is almost all of 12, so then we're going to round that one to 1. Again, a reminder, we're rounding either to 0, 1 half, or 1 whole. So 11 twelfths is almost 1 whole. Minus, now 2 ninths. 2 ninths is a little bit trickier. You have to think carefully. Where would that be on a number line? Well, let's see. Here's zero, here's one half, here's one whole. Where would two ninths be? Well, let's see, four and a half ninths would be exactly one half. We're at two ninths, so well, let's see. That would be somewhere in between zero and one half, and it'd be slightly closer to zero. So I'm gonna still round to zero for two ninths. And of course, one minus zero is just one. Three fifths, okay, here we go. I think this one's finally going to be um, one that rounds to one half. Again, we're rounding to zero, one half, or one whole. Three fifths, well, let's see, where would three fifths be with these three benchmarks? Three fifths would be a little more than one half, but not by much. So three fifths, we're gonna round to one half, divided by, now seven eighths, where would seven eighths be? Well, seven eighths would be pretty darn close to one, because eight eighths would be exactly one. So I'm gonna, round seven eighths to one. Let's see, one half divided by one. Well, um, 
1 half divided by 1 is simply 1 half. So this answer is going to end up being pretty darn close to 1 half. Okay, now we're using compatible numbers. Now compatible numbers means you may round perfectly, but you may end up with numbers that you have to sort of fiddle with a little bit. You have to sort of change them, even if they're not exactly rounding properly. We're looking for numbers that work well together. That's the compatible part of this. Let's take a look at this one. So we have 2 thirds of 17. All righty. Hmm. Well, I know this, that um, I can't divide 17 into thirds here. So what number could I divide into thirds that's really close to 17? Let's see here. I've got it. Instead of 2 thirds of 17, how about we do 2 thirds of 18? There we go. I know I can divide eight, 18 by 3. In fact, 1 third of 18, or 18 divided by 3, is 6. Again, that's 1 third of 18. I know is 6. Again, multiplying by 1 third is the same thing as dividing by 3. So 1 third times 18 is indeed 6. Well, that means that uh, 2 thirds of 18 would be 12. There we go. So 12 is our answer. So 2 thirds of 18. Notice how even though 17 was already a whole number and it didn't need to be rounded, I wanted to be able to find a number that worked well with the fraction 2 thirds. So really I was looking at the denominator to see what number I could change the 17 to that was close to 17 that I could divide by 3. And that's how we ended up finishing that problem by doing 2 thirds of 18, just to get an estimated answer. Okay, 20 and 1 fourth. Well, let's try rounding and see how the numbers work out. So 20 and 1 fourth, well, that rounds the 20, divided by 3 and 2 thirds. 3 and 2 thirds, well, 2 thirds is more than 1 half, so 3 and 2 thirds rounds to 4. And, oh, you know what? 20 is divisible by 4, so it doesn't look like I have to change my numbers at all to get this answer. So 20 divided by 4 is simply 5, and we're done with that one right there. I think our next one is our real world example. Oh yes, here we go. So Bate Middle School is four and one third miles from Joe's house. His bus stop is one fifth of that distance from home. About, there's our indication that we can estimate, about how far does Joe walk to meet his bus? So I need really one fifth of, now we'll talk about this in class, when you see the word of, that means you're supposed to multiply. So one-fifth of this distance, what distance? Well, it was this distance right here, the distance he, um, the school is from his house. So one-fifth of, of means times, the distance of four and one-third. But again, we're doing about, so we can just round our numbers off and try to get a quick estimate. Well, let's see, I, hmm, if I round four and one third, really that's four. One fifth of four, yikes. Um, can't really divide four by five, but what's really close to four that is divisible by five? Well, how about five? So why don't we change this for estimating purposes to one fifth of Five. I know four and one third doesn't really round to five, but this is more of a compatible number kind of question. We're, we're trying to get a quick, easy, relatively accurate estimate of this distance. So one fifth of five, well, one, if I divide five into five equal parts, each one of those parts would be one. One fifth of five is actually one. So Let's look and see if this answer makes sense. If his school is four and one third miles away, his bus stop is one fifth of that distance, 
How far does Joe walk to meet his bus? Well, if he's walking one-fifth of this four and one-third miles, yeah, he's walking a little less than, but about one mile. He's walking about one mile to get to that bus stop. All righty. And, oh, well, that's the last slide. Thanks for joining me with Estimating with Fractions um, with my little flipped classroom we're trying this year. Uh, my blog right here is at zig math dot blogspot dot com check that for updated information on what's going on in the classroom and uh, complete those questions at the bottom of this video on my webpage thanks a lot guys thanks for joining me as we work our way through the seventh grade math connects textbook feel free to email me with any questions my website is www.mattzigner.com on my site, you'll find links to my math blog, some of my favorite educational sites, and lots of helpful information for students, parents, and teachers. See you next time.